Christ be with you. And also with you. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. God, Jesus taught that where our treasure is, there will our hearts be also. In this hour, we come bringing our treasures, all that we have and all that we are. We come seeking your treasure. Treasure does not fade, decay, or disappoint. Share with us the treasure of heaven that we may boldly share it with others. Amen. I'm moving to the piano. Give me a second here. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you, 
and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Then I will teach your ways to rebels. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you, and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O God who saves. Then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. You do not desire a sacrifice, or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. Your sacri the sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O God. I do not have um, the faith we sing at home. So may I just lead the singing? Is that okay? Okay. Sure. <clears throat> yes, <Yeah>, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sunday's palms are Wednesday's ashes as another Lent begins. Thus we kneel before the Maker in contrition for our sins. We have marred baptismal pledges in rebellion gone astray. Now returning, seek forgiveness, grant us pardon, God, this day. We have failed to love our neighbors, their offenses to forgive. Have not listened to their troubles, nor have cared just how they live. We are jealous, proud, impatient, loving over much our things. May the yielding of our failings be our Lenten offerings. We are hasty to judge others, blind to proof of human need. And our lack of understanding demonstrates our inner greed. We have wasted us resources, want and suffering we've ignored. Come and cleanse us, then restore us. Make our new hearts within us, Lord. Our gospel lesson is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 6 and 16 through 21. Watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth. They have received all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private and your father who sees everything will reward you. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. Then your father who sees everything will reward you. And when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and disheveled so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face, 
then no one will notice that you are fasting except your father who knows what you do in private. And your father who sees everything will reward you. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pastor, you have to unmute, we can't hear you, sorry. Thank you, I appreciate that, amen. We'll start again. I said, Lord, we thank you that you have given us treasures, treasures to be used in your kingdom for your people. But God, quite often we have hoarded treasures for ourselves. So God, in this Lenten season, help us to know that the treasures are to be used for the uplifting of your kingdom, to help others come to see you and know you. But God, even in this season, in a time where so much has been taken away, help us see the rose in the crack that we may see the beauty that is still existent in this world. Create in us disciplines to let us know you fully. And God, in the discipline, give us strength and help us feel your presence. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen and amen. This, as I have read this by another uh, theologian, was the lentiest Lent we've ever had. In Lent, this Christian tradition, we normally give something up. It may be chocolate or caffeine, or as one of my colleagues said, a habit that we don't want to pick up again. It may be something that we're doing that gives us comfort. And the reason that we do that is to show that we are disciplined enough to follow God. So giving up to Lent is something that should cost us something. There are so many different things that we can give up to Lent. There are so many different ways that we can say, we are, in this, we are in this discipline for 40 days, which right now for a year doesn't seem that long, but it's still a long time when we've not had our comfort. I want everyone to acknowledge that we have been in Lent since March of last year. We've had our liberties restricted. We couldn't hold our friends and our neighbors. The, our favorite restaurant, we can't go to. Think about just strolling in the street and smelling a, a wonderful smell of coffee or a flower or a perfume we've not been able to do. How about the fact that some of us haven't seen our parents. We have felt like we have been in a prolonged season of discipline. There are those critics who say, oh, God is disciplining you. Let's so that God can come to see you so that you can be and know where God is. I believe in a God of discipline, but I also believe in a God of love. He knew what was going on from the beginning, but he also knows that 
There is so much that we can take and then we get tired. So at this Ash Wednesday, at the beginning of Lent, I also, I want to give you just another perspective on Lenten discipline. Instead of just taking things away, and I'm not saying don't do it, I want to give you something to add to. To add to. Now, I know you may say, Pastor, I can't do any more thing. One more thing that you put on my, my plate, I just can't do. But I think this is something that you can do every day. And it's going to take discipline to do it. And at the end of this 40 days, I promise you, not only will you be sustained, not only will you be closer to God, but this discipline will be something that you will want to do the rest of your life if you do these very simple things. The first thing I'm going to say to everyone is breathe. Take a deep breath and breathe. Before you get up in the morning, before you're cognizant, before your feet hit the ground, just take a deep breath and breathe. Recognize that God has allowed you to see another day. Your bones may be achy. It may be cold in your house. You may have a list of a million things to do when you get up. But before you get up in the morning, the very first thing you do is breathe. When you breathe, breathe in the presence of God in your house. If you have a partner, listen to your partner's breathing before you get up. Listen to the rhythmic breathing. Listen to the ambient sounds in your house. What this is doing is giving you a moment before you start today to recognize that there is an attitude of gratitude that you need to start with today. Now, this is actually where the Lenten diff discipline starts. When you have awakened enough to breathe, listen. Listen to the sounds in your house. If there are birds that are chirping, if your house is creaking, but more important, importantly, listen to see if you can hear God speaking in that still small voice. Listen to directives. Listen to comfort. Listen to see, is there something God wants you to do today? Maybe just listen because God is telling you to be still. After listening, expect to hear something. Expect something to happen. You don't know what it is. If you knew what it was, then there wouldn't be an air of expectation. The expectation is that something good will happen to you today. When we expect something good, something good will happen. God promises that. So you listen and then you expect. When you finish listening and you're expecting, the next thing you do is anticipate and acknowledge that you have needs in your life. That must be a tough thing sometimes. Sometimes there are so many things that we need, it feels as if we're overwhelmed. When we wake up and we start thinking about it and we're listening, we think about all the stuff we have to do and the needs that we have. Some of the needs are comfort, some of it is unemployment, some of it is just maybe an extra hour of sleep, but there are needs. When you acknowledge there are needs, then you turn that acknowledgement to the fact that you actually need God. You're listening to him, 
you're expecting to hear God. But when you acknowledge God's need, you become like a babe in an arm that begins to cry in their crib. And God says, oh, my daughter, my son needs me. Let me go to where they are. And then finally, you're asleep. You're just waking up. You're breathing. You're anticipating, expecting good. You're recognizing that you need God. Then take five minutes to pray. Doesn't have to be anything big. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can be just an acknowledgement that I'm here today, God. Help me today. I may not be feeling so well, but God, come with me today. Guide me. Comfort me. Let me know that this will not be this way always. Five minutes. If you recognize what I just finished saying, that is L-E-N-T. That is a Lenten discipline. Listening to God. Expecting to hear from God. Acknowledging your need for God. And then praying to God. If you do that every morning before your feet hit the bed, you take that five minutes to listen to God, to recognize that God is here. And that be the very first thing that you even say. At the end of the 40 days, this will become a habit for you. And you'll be able to more easily slip into God's presence for everything you do. It's going to take a discipline. It's going to take time that sometimes you feel you don't have. But if you don't acknowledge God, you will find that the time that you thought you didn't have, God will ask you for it again at the end because you have told God that you were his and God loves you enough to bring you back to him. Practice your Lenten discipline five minutes a day. Every other thing you do, great. You can give up whatever you want to, but when you give that time to God first, you can't unbeat. You can never outgive God and God will always give back to you. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40 day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the space were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sin and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you therefore in the name of the church to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word to make a ripe beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now bow our heads before our creator, creator and redeemer.
Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we giving everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. If you have your uh, burlap cross, I would ask you to pick them up. And together, remember that you are dust. And to dust, you shall return. Out of the depths of our fear, out of the depths of our darkness, we call upon you, O oh God, to save us. Hear us now. Where you see the dark, I'm going to invite you to unmute and read with us. Christ Jesus, you see our broken lives. We, we reach out, out with greedy hands. hands. Christ Jesus, you heal our distorted desires. Grabbing, grabbing, gathering, 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 Christ Jesus, you feel our needy goals. Never, 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 never having have enough. enough. Christ Jesus, you ease our pains and sorrows. Christ Jesus, join us to yourself that we may never be greedy again. Forgive us, Forgive us for, God, for, God, for we, we have sinned. sinned. Merciful God, I confess that I am broken. I have acted in spite, hurt others by my words and deeds, deliberately done what is wrong. Forgive me, O oh God, for I have sinned. Merciful God, I confess, I confess that I am broken. I, am broken. I, have, I have lived for myself, for myself not, not for others. For judged where I, I should be. I should be. Little, little, little where I should have built up. up. O oh Lord, oh Lord, I pray for justice, not justice not or walk humbly with you. Forgive me, O oh God, oh God, 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 I have sinned. Christ Jesus, complete us with yourself that we may leave, live from your abundance. Building, building, building caring, 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 creating, creating giving, giving, receiving, receiving sharing. sharing. God so loved this world and this people that God sent Christ to suffer and die for all. Accept now that gift and know that you are forgiven, Amen. reconciled, Amen. accepted, and loved. Amen. 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 May the almighty and merciful God, who desires not the death of a sinner, but that we turn from wickedness and live, accept your repentance, forgive your sins, and restore you by the Holy Spirit to newness of life. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let us for just a second offer to each other 
signs of reconciliation and love. And then when we hear the Lord, Lord's prayer, we will all say that again together. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Also with you. You are greater than we can understand, vaster than we can imagine, more amazing than you can put, than we can put into words. So with awe and deep gratitude, we pray together. Our Father, our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed, be hallowed be thy name, name. thy kingdom, thy kingdom come. come. I will, I will be done on, on earth as, as it is in heaven. Is in heaven. Give, give us this day, this day our daily bread. bread. And, forgive and forgive us, us, our, us trespasses. our trespasses. As we forgive us as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us, and lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. From evil. For thine For is the kingdom. Is the kingdom the and, power, and the power and the, and glory. the glory forever. forever. Uh, Amen. 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 And our final hymn is number 402 in the oh, hymnal, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian, number 402. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. May God create in you a clean heart, a transformed heart, 
a heart that knows and seeks and loves the justice and mercy of the Lord. May you accept the gift of salvation, not your personal possession to be coveted, but his work accomplished in the destruction of sin on the cross of Christ, of Jesus Christ. And may you humble yourself before the Lord, coming before him with a broken spirit, a contrite heart, receiving from his hand great compassion and unfailing love. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Remember your Lenten discipline to listen to God, to anticipate and expect good, to remember that you need God and to pray five minutes in the morning. In the, in the name of Jesus the Christ, amen and amen. Go in peace. Have a wonderful rest of your Ash Wednesday. And we thank you for worshiping with us together. Amen. And we'll prayerfully see you Sunday. Amen.